Welcome everybody to the Age of Becoming Moon River Restorative Rest Practice. Oh, yes, it is um, May the 7th and um, I am really glad to be here to be doing this practice together um, with um, we're going to do this a little bit differently than we've done this before. Um, I am recording this practice and it is going to go on to YouTube. So unlike the other practices, this will be something that's publicly available. So this was the, my idea about these classes is to make them as widely available as possible. And, um, and I'll talk a little bit about why in just a minute, but, um, so unlike usually, I will not be sending a follow-up email, but rather you can find um, the classes under Moon River Restorative Practice on my YouTube channel. And if you got a um, reminder email from me, that link is there. For props today, um, I am recommending either a yoga block, a yoga bolster or two big firm pillows, then um, either two towels or two smaller pillows. And then with the option of um, an eye covering, if you like that, a blanket, if your space is cool at all, which mine was, I'm not gonna use a blanket so you can see my body, but I did put on a turtleneck, <laughs> even though it's May. <laughs> Um, and, and as always a soft surface underneath you so that your body has something to, um, soften, relax into what we're going to do today is, um, a practice that, um, will start with the centering practice. We will then do a little bit of movement. Hey, Teresa. Um, just to uh, loosen things up, shake up the cells in the body, and, um, and then we will do some restorative, um, which Phoenix is very good at. It's her specialty, actually. <laughs> She's my best teacher. Um, so my question for you today, darlings, is what is your relationship to time? And, um, and if you're like me, perhaps you've had an evolving relationship with time. Um, I certainly spent, uh, have spent much of my life feeling like there was never enough and have made it a practice to expand my attention to the present moment, which also expands my experience of time. Um, today, before our practice, um, I walked to the mailbox, which as I'm healing a broken foot, yes, it's very exciting, yes. Lots of cheering. I did it in two sneakers, which was also very exciting. And um, I can go exactly one speed. So about, um, uh, let's see, about halfway through my walk, it started to rain. And I could go exactly one speed to get home. And I was really aware of like, there's certain conditioning tendency to want to hurry, to like quickly, let's get through this and get home and get dry. And then I was like, that's, that's not gonna happen. So what do I do with that? And this is um, the practice is, um, this week we've been focusing on this quote from Alan Watts, which is both hurrying and delaying are two different ways of resisting the present moment. And, and I wonder, um, I sometimes find restorative yoga is a tough sell to a certain kind of person. Restorative yoga is like, are you kidding me? I don't have time for that. 
I don't have time to lie down on pillows. What the hell? And, um, and I say that with complete ownership to my own feeling about that probably uh, not that long ago. So my invitation is to drop into as best our human minds can into the present moment and allow yourself um, to let time unfold in the next hour, all right? Our physical anchor is on a centering practice that was developed by um, Richard Strozzi, which is a practice that centers our bodies in length, in width, and in depth. Um, and so that's how we're going to start today. Um, okay, down you go. There you go. Um, so, so let me, I'm going to, and, and our practice is going to be about half with music, half without. I think there are benefits in both. And so let's do both. So let's just begin by finding ourselves in standing. So that's where we're going to start. If it doesn't feel accessible to you today, you're welcome to do the same centering practice seated. But feel your feet, spread your toes out, and let your feet press down. Practice was that of having a big 
dinosaur tail from the back of the, your head down your spine all the way along the floor behind you. This is your experience, your past. You can lean into, you can trust the space behind you. So relaxing into these three dimensions. And then just give yourself a little pulse. Little shake out. Now there's no right way to do this, you guys. I'm inviting you just to move your body with some awareness of these three dimensions. Yeah. So depending on what you've been doing today, you might feel some contraction, or some compression. What we're inviting is to fluff up the space. Ah. Notice your breath. Your breath will help create some spaciousness inside you. Yeah, noticing your body up and down. Side to side.
Any last parts that need your attention? In this moving part of our practice. So bringing yourself into your practice space, making any sartorial adjustments that you may need to make. You may want to take off shoes, put on a layer, put on socks. Yeah, making sure you've got all of your gear with you. And begin with either your yoga bolster or a couple of uh, firm pillows, having them a long way on your space and just a little bit on an angle. So begin just bringing yourself into all fours and just moving your spine around a little bit. If your knees are sensitive the way mine are, you might need a little extra padding for your knees, maybe an extra pillow or blanket under your knees. Your ankles are tender, you may want something under there. But then take your right knee and move it toward your right wrist. Be a supported pigeon pose. Inhaling up, lifting up, and softening down onto your pillows. Looking toward on the pillow side. So there's lots of variations on this. Your back foot can be top of the foot down. It could also be resting bent on the side. You can even tuck it in closer. Experiment to see what feels the most easy. long, slow, deep breaths. And then just let your breath do whatever it wants to do. in your breath, lengthening your body. Breathing into the width of your hips and your back. Hmm. 
every breath creating space in the depth of your body. As you're ready, gently letting your hands come right under your shoulders and slowly lift up. You may want to pause in all fours again, moving your spine a little bit as you move your pillows or your bolster into the other angle. Draw your left knee toward your left wrist. So that your pillow is along the length of your shin and come down away. So if you have tender ankles, make adjustments so that it feels easeful. Maybe give it more support. Find a different position. Here, notice your arms. Find a way. I like to tuck my hands underneath the pillows. It gives a sense of groundedness. Again, noticing your back leg. Either top of the foot down or side of the foot. Leg bent or straight. Again, noticing your breath, allowing it to go into the bowl of your pelvis and fill it in all directions. And gently, if your hands are tucked, untuck them. And bring yourself back up. Again, you may want to pause, letting your neck reorient. And then take your pillows or your bolster the length of your space. And then taking your two pillows on either side, just below the bolster. Turning over into a chest and heart opening position. So my low back is right at the base of my bolster. Lifting up, looking up, and then slowly lowering myself down. So my head should land with support. Now, sometimes I find that my head kind of juts up, in which case you might want to take an eye pillow or a, a little, a small pillow so that the back of your neck feels long. 
Eventually, we're going to come to a heart opening position with your arms. But let's begin by orienting the legs. I'm going to suggest a Baddha Konasana, which is soles of the feet together, knees wide. And I love to do this with some support, two pillows underneath my thighs, not even underneath my knees, like under, really tucked under my thighs. You could also have your legs out long. You could also have your feet wide and your knees resting together. Completely up to you to find what feels most easeful. Then let your arms either rest out like bird's wings or whatever, maybe bent in a little bit. You find what feels best. breath or two, let yourself land in this new shape. Noticing any small muscles, perhaps around your eyes or your mouth, your hands, your hips. See if you can allow them to unwind with every exhale.
here, asking yourself, how could you spread out a little wider, connect a little more deeply to your own sensation? And if your legs are in Baddha Konasana, use your hands to help lift them back up. And gently, everybody, roll yourself off of your pillows. Using your top hand to press yourself back up into seated. Give yourself a moment here to reorient I think of my body like an hourglass, allowing the sand to settle and center again. We set up for another shape. Taking two pillows at the bottom of your space, stacking them on top of each other. Your shins are gonna go here. And then taking a pillow, your pillows or your bolster and having it go crossways in your space. This is for your heart. We're gonna begin here with a belly down mountain brook pose. So imagining that your, your pillows are like stones in the river and your body is the water running over it. So just letting your feet fall, however they fall on your pillows, finding a place just under your armpits for your pillows above and for your chest. And then you can let your head rest. You might want a little pillow here or resting on your arms. And here I invite you to imagine your body like this mountain brook. And as you breathe, you increase the depth of the brook. So with every breath, the brook fills and gets deeper. See if you can imagine the deepening brook happening in your feet. In your lower legs. Your breath deepening through your upper legs and your hips.
expanding your body front to back through your chest, your belly. your arms and your head. See if you can feel the weight of your head sinking to the depth of the brook. Your pelvis sinking down. Your lower legs sinking like driftwood to the bottom of the brook. Taking a last few breaths in this shape, feeling the flow of your body as a mountain brook. Mm. And then moving very slowly, without hurry, without rush, slowly press down, allow yourself to come up into all fours, and reorienting again, letting yourself feel the hourglass Pour down. And redistributing your props again. 
So we're going to do a supported bridge pose. So the lower the support, the more easeful in some ways. And I'm really going to invite you to play around with how high you stack your goodies here. I've been um, sitting a lot today and I'm looking for some openings, some passive release at the front of my hips. So I've got the bolster and two pillows. I invite you to just feel what feels right for you. And so what you're gonna do is come on top of your pile and scoochie your tail to the edge, to the back, to the, I don't know, uh, front or back edge. Your feet are flat on the floor and you'll slowly lower yourself down so that your hips are supported. So you don't want to feel um, a big curve in the low back. It's more of the sacrum being supported so that there is a line, some kind of angle between your knees and your shoulders. This is an inversion, which gets the fluids and blood moving in the opposite directions, what they usually do. Very calming to your heart. And here you can play with spreading your feet out like two little puddles. And your hands can rest. I like them palms up at an angle away from my body, but you could also have them resting on your belly, on your props, whatever feels good. You might even play with them being overhead. And here, I invite you to sense your length. So sense the length from the crown of your head to your knees, allowing your breath to invite in more length. Maybe imagining your thigh bones, these longest bones in your body, the femur bones, to extend with every breath. Letting the bones in your feet Extend out. Breathing space into the bones in your spine. Now you're totally welcome to stay right here. I'm going to show you a variation on this pose that I call starfish on a rock. So lengthening your legs out and your arms overhead. Draping your body as if your props were a rock and you were a starfish. perhaps accentuating the sensation of length. A 
big, long starfish draped over a rock. And here, noticing the sensation on your skin, or maybe just under your skin. Feeling what it feels like inside this shape. So you may start with the sensation of the surface underneath you, your props, your clothes, jewelry. But then take your awareness to the sensation just under your skin. Here you might find a sensation of tingling or pulsing or flow. See if you can use your breath to expand your awareness of this sensation just under your skin. And check in with yourself. See if it would feel better to move your legs to a different position, your arms. Make adjustments. Noticing the difference between adjusting your body for comfort and fidgeting, which is often a sign of wanting to move to the next thing. So taking a couple of breaths here. Maybe give yourself a little bit of a stretch into the length that you feel in this moment. And then everybody, whatever your legs are doing, just lift your feet off the floor and Gently draw your knees toward your chest. And 
and in some way, roll yourself off of your props as <laughs> deliberately as you can. And once more, bring yourself into a reorientation. And then we're gonna close our practice with a Shavasana. So this is a final resting pose that you can do supported. That is perhaps pillows under parts of your body um, to feel more easeful. Some people like to just come into a rest directly on the floor. I'm also going to, to offer either resting on your back or resting on your belly, which is what I'm gonna do. What do you think, Phoenix? So there's no fancy science to this. Simply allowing your body to find some place to rest. So again, with or without props. So my ankles want some support on my belly. Hmm. Yeah. Again, feeling free to adjust your body as it's needed. And then let yourself land. Using this last shape as an integration of the whole practice. Centering yourself here on your length. Your width. And your depth. And it's from this centered place this place of our own dignity that we can expand our attention So allow yourself to feel your bones. Your muscles. Your connective tissue. your organs. And your skin. And feeling your presence here in this space that expands beyond your skin.
your presence that expands beyond the building that you're in. It encompasses the land that you're on. It expands into your community. your presence that connects you to all the people in your city, your town, your state. The country. And across the world all people everywhere and in particular today extending our practice and our presence to the people in India many of the practices that we do originated in India we owe them a debt of gratitude for those practices. And in the face of their suffering, our hearts extend out to them. Begin to take some deep breaths. Collecting yourself again. Very gently rolling to one side and pausing there. And as you're ready, Pressing yourself up into seated. So my friends, if you'd like, you can bring yourself to your screen or you can stay exactly where you are, whatever is your preference today. And I blow you all kisses of ease. Mm -hmm. Thank you, friends. <laughs>